All right, welcome back everyone to Vulcan Deckmasters week one day two We're onwards to the last match of the day between Trump and Hawkeye again Hawkeye a very solid shaman player now before we move on I'd like to give a quick shout out to Squarespace sponsoring the tournament alongside Vulcan Squarespace is a website that allows you to make websites So if you're wanting to make your own website very easily and you don't know anything about coding Which I don't you don't know anything about graphical design, which I don't you can head there very cheap It's actually uh, I think the first few uh, first few are free you can get a free trial over there check it out if you want to build your own website it's very nice squarespace.com slash deckmasters go check it out um, that being said back to the game Trump versus Hawkeye what do you expect Trump to be playing today uh, so we actually do have their deck list right now Trump is bringing warlock warrior paladin which is actually the exact same set that he brought to yesterday's match as we mentioned before Trump is a very predictable player but at the same time no matter how well you can predict what a player is bringing if they play the decks well and they know what they're doing they can still pull out some easy wins meanwhile Hawkeye is actually bringing druid warlock and hunter so Trump ended up banning Hawkeye's warlock while Hawkeye banned Trump's warrior this yeah. leaves Trump with warlock and paladin versus Hawkeye's Druid and Hunter. What do you think about these lists? I, I think it's kind of interesting because Hawkeye, I really wanted him to bring a Shaman list. Of course, um, you don't have to expect everyone to always bring that. And I think the Conquest format doesn't really allow you to do much with a Shaman list. It, it's kind of hard to, to pinpoint an archetype and find a Shaman deck that's going to wreck it. I think Shamans are good all around, um, around classes. But as far as finding a specific weakness you want to exploit, maybe not the best. So Hawkeye going for Druid Hunter... I think has a uh, slight edge over Warlock Paladin, depending on what the archetypes are. If Trump is playing Handlock, which he very often is, that might be the big difference. Because Handlock mm -hmm. will usually be better than Druid. Um, although some have argued that Emperor Thorson has changed this dynamic quite a bit, and the double combo decks uh, have also closed the gap. Now, if I recall correctly, I think Hawkeye normally likes the Malagos Warlock, which again was banned, so we will not be able to see it. Right. But if Trump did decide to bring the Handlock version, I think he will be running into a little bit of trouble against Hawkeye's Hunter and Druid, two decks that, on average, I would have to say, have slight advantage over the Handlock version. Meanwhile, the Paladin, again, does not do all that well against Hunter. It can absolutely take out some wins with a Zombie Chow start. Uh, running into a Heobot turn 5 and really kind of taking the board control. But if it's not able to handle a fast Hunter start, Paladin runs into trouble. Meanwhile, what do you think about the Paladin versus Druid matchup, if we happen to be able to see that? Well, honestly, I think uh, that's almost... Um, it's either the Druid gets a blowout win, which is you know very often the case. They play on tempo and the, the Paladin can't catch up. Or very often the Paladin just takes it fairly easily. I mean, Paladin, you will usually be able to live unless the Druid curves out almost flawlessly. And here that's, we get started into experience. Game 1. We see Trump on what looks like a, uh, I would say, absolutely is a Handlock version with a two double or the double Mountain Giant start. And then Hawkeye on his Druid. Now, when I did say that Druid normally has a slight advantage over Handlock, especially with the combos right now. Do they? I, I think know. it does. Okay. If you can control the Handlock's original start, then I think the ability of the Druid to burst down the Handlock very quickly overall does have an advantage. However, with not being able to deal with one Molten Giant, let alone two, he is going to run into a lot of trouble against Trump here. Uh, big game hunter is always possible, but yeah, I mean, that's a power start. And as I said, you know, Emperor Thorson for Druid, I think, is what makes this match up a lot easier whereas like the double combo does help and i think back when the the very common play you know was to have one combo in your druid deck and you otherwise were playing a pretty standard ramp um when people started making the fast druid with spectral knights and double combo then the handlock versus druid matchup started evening out and now with emperor thorson i think that gap has closed even further absolutely um ooh, and trump ends up top decking the Twilight Drake. Now, if you were in his position, would you lean more towards the Twilight Drake or the Mountain Giant in this uh, current state? So there's two arguments to be made, I guess. If you play the Twilight Drake, the only thing it's going to die to is a Keeper of the Grove plus Innervate and deal damage to it. Or if you play Mountain, it's going to die to BGA straight up. So this, if, he's wanna, if he wants to play the Twilight Drake while having it survive a turn, this is the time. Um, mm -hmm. He's at least going to get you know a little bit of damage out of it. If, however, he wants to punch as much of a threat as possible and force Hawkeye to have the answer, uh, Mountain Giant will be the stronger play. 
So exactly. It's the Twilight Drake, I think, is the safer player right here. But if he does play the Mountain Giant, he will get rewarded with Hawkeye's current hand. However, let's say that Hawkeye did have the big game hunter. He would have an easy answer with Shadow Flame to actually knock off the 4-4 uh, Shade of Naxxramas and the big game hunter. So it really would not have been the end of the world for Trump. He would have lost the board control he could have had with the current Twilight Drake. But at the same time, he would have actually been able to clear off this shade, which could have been an absolute nuisance as the game goes on. Yeah, and what's really annoying here is that, you know, Trump might just decide to Shadow Flame. Like, do you Shadow Flame the Drake in a position um, like this? Like, do you just not care about your Drake anymore? Because it's almost less useful than the Ancient, right? Since the Ancient can actually be taunted up and do something relevant in the course of this that's game. That's an interesting argument. I would actually have to think about that a little bit, but... With the Ancient actually having the ability to be taunted up and an easy kill on the Azure Drake with just a hero power, I would not be against throwing out the Twilight Drake now. But at the same time, he could consider actually just tapping playing Giant and then forcing his opponent to continue to have the answers. So you play Giant and then you trade into the 2-4? Mm -hmm. Tap, like tap giant, giant, trade into the 2-4. All right, you know what? I don't even dislike that. It's the kind of the same uh, same thing we talked about earlier. Uh, but again, Hawkeye not having to use his hero power because no turn six came up for the Drake. It kind of gives um, Trump like if there was a BGH here, Trump would really get punished for this because now the shade is out of range of Shadow Flame. So it turns out we have a small spectator bug, but we should still continue with the match and see as much as we can. But I would have to. Well, actually, what do you think? Do you think he's going to Wrath and trade here? Or just yeah, the definitely. In? No, no, definitely the trade here. If you had BGA, this would be such an easy... Act. This position would be very strong for Hawkeye. But without the big game hunter, things are a little different. And with that second giant possibly coming around, um, he won't have a good time with this one. I personally expect to see a giant um, acidic swamp boost and then a zombie chow. What do you think? Yeah, I think at this point you just vomit your hand on the board. Like, this is a very easy turn. And his transitions are pretty good. You know, he's got Shadow Flame and Hellfire for AoE. If he gets punched and over aggro, he's got the heal bot. Jaraxxus is only three turns away, so that's not very uh, very threatening for him. No, I really like uh, Trump's position here. Now he's in an interesting spot. He could consider just throwing down the Emperor Thoris and give him a seven mana combo and really start going face. And this is the position where the Druid will be in that he, he's always going to be threatening lethal, especially if he gets the Thoris and down in the next turn or two, giving himself a cheap combo. And then from then on, Trump has to play defensively. No matter if Hawkeye had the combo or not in hand, all of a sudden the handlock is completely on the run. He needs to find a way to be healed up to a certain point and have enough taunts on the table and find a way to kill Hawkeye at the same time. So it puts him kind of in an awkward situation. So it'll be interesting to see of how he goes about this in the next couple of turns. Do you like Shadow Flame Coil here? Or do you not think it's the time yet? Because here's the thing, I, I think Hawkeye really wants to get a second Savage War for that Emperor Thorson. because if he can get a double combo play, it's going to really empower him to punch through. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's convenient. So I would have actually personally really liked your play there, where you Shadow Flame the 4-5 in Mortal Coil, because you would also have been able to get a tap in. Right. I think Trump may have played that turn a little bit quickly, but again, he does have a lot of experience with handlock, so he might want to save the Shadow Flame for a larger opportunity, which, if that's what he's thinking, you can't say it's a mistake by any means. I'm just afraid that he's playing into Swipe very heavily here. I mean, that's the only worry I've got. His board is very weak to Swipe. I mean, the Belcher would live, but, you know, Belcher is not your powerhouse here. It's the Giant. Hmm. Exactly. And at the same time, but you gotta realize, Hawkeye has used a Wrath already, so Trump may have just overlooked Swipe and may just be hoping that he doesn't have it, which in this case, it is going to pay off. Hawkeye is just completely on the run. He has to find a way to, I guess, play not only defensively, but still try to build up a board to a point that this combo can finish Trump off. I think Sylvanas is a mandatory play. Otherwise, I mean, you could you want to play Emperor because you want to get mana reduction and like a massive amount of innervates, but the drawback is, how does it win? Because you might just take phase damage back and like nonstop no from now on. And you've got really no way to catch up. Mm -hmm. And this Sylvanas is going to be doing a lot of work, especially because Trump does not have an owl. Ah, um, setting up for that Force of Nature Savage War tree kill on the Belcher. I like that.
I, I, yeah, I really like that. But the question is, does that kind of give it away? Will Trump realize what he's up against <laughs> right now and I find a way so. to play around it? Yeah, I think it's a dead giveaway. Now, trading the giant away is not too bad for Trump because it allows him to feed his opponent a crappy minion in the best cases. And no owl to negate the death rattle of Sylvanas. Or is he just going to punch face and force Hawkeye to have the answer? I think that is what he's doing, and I'm a little bit worried about that. He had the opportunity to play Healbot, to play Ancient Watcher, to play Argus, and actually get minions out that don't matter. But here we're going to see a huge amount of damage coming from this horse combo and actually being and able to steal swipe it. Is and the up. swipe to top it all off. This is what I was saying. The swipe was the biggest weakness of Trump's board. But is it a weakness at this point? Because he has no way to kill off his own Sylvanas. Well, I mean, you could play Jewel of the Claw. You can't kill your own Sylvanas unless you Savage Roar. You could swipe the giant Savage Roar. Um... So he actually could. So if he swipes the 3-4, charges Drew to the Claw in, right. kills his Sylvanas and the Giant, and then takes a 50-50 on getting the Emperor Thorsan. Right, if that's what he wants to do. I mean, he could also use Force of Nature Savage War just to trade Sylvanas away. Mm -hmm. um, it's not even a bad play, because you can use Savage War to kill the Slime off. I mean, that, that was a dead giveaway, right? We all knew that Hawkeye, based on the play that he made, Trump saw the Force of Nature Savage War coming. Which Absolutely. Is, question is how does he go about doing this what is the way he wants to try to clear this board off Kills and he's Zombie really Chef. taking some time to think about it yeah he i don't think he can afford to think too long but so it looks he like he just wants to clear it. the entire board and take the watcher i think that's absolutely I think the play was to kill emperor first to maybe get the giant but let's uh let's leave that up to debate i would actually have to think that he may have wanted the Ancient Watcher over the Giant, because a lot Not of the times, uh, Handlocks do run Big Game Hunter, and by just keeping the uh, Watcher, it gives you a target for Silence later, so it could end up being a Yeti later in the game. I guess it also negates the uh, Defend of Argus value, and there's the BGH you actually spoke of, so yeah, I mean, that might just uh, has been the play. That might have been I, I do have to say that I am... I'm trying to think if there was any other way to do that, too, not either ensure that you get something bigger or actually give you a chance of getting something bigger, but at the worst, giving you the Ancient Watcher. And I don't think there was a way off the top of my mind. So this Emperor... What do you think about Emperor Thorisan over Sludge Belcher and Druid the Claw here? Oh, I think it makes a lot of sense. Because you're getting... Uh, like, double swipe for six is actually a really potent tempo play. Where swipe is usually a reactive removal piece, that you have to combo with other stuff. When you've got two of them, it feels really good. Mm -hmm. It makes it so much easier to wipe boards. But this puts him in an awkward position. He doesn't have a great way to wipe off this. Actually, I lied. So I think Defender of Argus and Shadow Flame on the 4-5 may be his best option. That'll also give him an opportunity to either tap or use his heal bot, which that's, I think, the biggest question as to how he wants to do it. I think you're right. I think the Defend of Argus Shadow Flame is by far the most valuable play he's got. I mean, you could play Hellfire Dark Bomb as well. That's also perfectly alright. So it's interesting. Actually, that that's interesting because he can play Molten Giant right now. He could have actually kept his Belcher alive by coin Dark Bombing. But I think what he wants to do is oh, Jiraxis. Oh, big game hunter top deck. It was about time for Hawkeye. I don't know how many of them he's running, but he really needed them early game. Trump finding the two mountain giants early was a really big issue for Hawkeye. But here's another like, question. You could actually use your double swipe and get a minion out on the board to start doing damage. But I would have to think that he wants to save the swipes because he has already used a combo to kill off his opponent actually with the 8 damage burst. No, I think that's definitely the safer play. Now, would you prefer Druid of the Claw here or the... Uh, I actually like Belcher slightly better, but maybe, uh... I'd have to agree with that. I actually would have liked Belcher there because of the fact that you could use Swipe, Double Swipe, and Druid of the Claw Charge in one turn for a 12 damage burst, and that's 12 damage, not combo, which Trump really may have not been playing around. Now, how can I... Let's just, uh... Keep that in mind. He does hope that his board stays around, but he's not counting on it at this point. <laughs> Like, he, throwing away the Druid of the Claw was, like, playing as, as a taunt minion, generally speaking, is a is a hopeful play. Back in the days, that guy was meant, like, almost guaranteed to live. Nowadays, taunted Druid of the Claw very often just dies before it does anything. 
So when you That's play it, you're true. just hoping that things are going to go your way. Wow. Ancient of War comes down. Uh, this will make things very interesting of how he goes about this. Also, another question is, what do you want to swipe on top of Ancient of War here? So you swipe first, and then you Ancient, yeah. I think that is a very solid play. But then there comes the question is, what do you swipe? Do you swipe face or do you swipe the Dr. Boom so that it actually trades with the Ancient of War to follow it oh, up? Oh, I think you've got to do Dr. Boom because let's assume he does. I mean, you might not even play the Ancient, but like, if you do, let's assume he does have Siphon Soul. Um, the Dr. Boom need to at least be damaged for the second swipe to finish it off. All right, he's just going to curve fully on 10 and keep his power plays for the next turn. Okay, that's not too big of a, uh, an issue. I, I, I like this play. It'll be interesting to see the 8 mana Lord Draxus will be coming down with a 6-6, six, six, so this is a scary position for Hawkeye. He needs to end this game fast, because every yeah. turn Trump will be playing something that Big Game Hunter doesn't affect, yet really has almost the same power level as a giant. Well, the question is, how does Hawkeye really get the damage that he wants in here? Because the, between the two heal bots, right? And the uh, the Defender of Argus and the Sunfree Protector, Trump is going to be able to taunt up those 6-6s six alongside whatever it is that he ends up playing very exactly. easily. And Hawkeye is going to have to find a way to go through that. He's got one Keeper of the Grove left, if I'm not mistaken. He used one of the very early uh, Twilight Drake. And doesn't and, cycle and I, the Wild Growth. I think showing that he has the Ancient of War right now shows that he only may be running one combo, which is not what you need right now against a Handlock. Definitely not. You really do want two of those. And the Siphon Soul shows up. Again, Hawkeye, that's going to be painful in that Nation of War. Mm -hmm. These boom bots are going to be big, but at the same time, double heal bot will get him out of any range that he should be worried about. That, that uh, Siphon Soul will most likely be coming down on the Ancient of War, which Definitely, yeah. at, at this point, I don't see a way that Hawkeye has, can get out of this. What do you think? Uh, back to back card draw. Mm, is there anything like Wild Growth, Innervate, Savage War, Force of Nature? Is there anything like that it could actually hit for 15? I mean, with the Boom Bots, it's definitely possible. Which is why Trump might opt to actually uh, taunt up instead of healing. If he's worried about a double combo play, that is probably the safer way to go about it. And he does go for the absolute ultimate taunt wall. Mm -hmm. Ancient of Lore. Ancient of Lore is what he's looking for, but he's facing down lethal on board, and by throwing down the Ancient of War here, he will be losing to that Siphon Zul. So these boom bots may determine the game as if he hits... What, what do these boom bots need to hit, and how does this need to happen right now? I think he needs to top deck his second wrath. The only way I can see him potentially staying in the game... And then the boom bots have to both trade and kill a 4 2 and a 2 3. Which is a huge requirement. Uh, exactly. He can always pick up an Innervate to play that Wild Growth and have another chance at a Wrath. But he can't heal because that's a dead play. That is just going to be the losing play by a long shot. Even, even a second big game hunter could prove to be helpful. Oh, he oh. is running the double combo, but unfortunately it will not be enough. He needs to find the Wrath, and he's on the ropes here. Why is the rope going so quickly? Am I crazy, or is it going very fast? And he picks up a he Savage a double War. Combo. I expected the... Uh, I expected the Savage War here. Am I, am I insane? I expected to innovate Savage War to double trade and I kill that. I expected that too, but at the same time, then he loses other win condition. I have to say, I am a little bit surprised how Hawkeye managed to fit a double combo and Ancient of War to this deck. Cut uh, one Wrath, perhaps. Thing. That's true, but he did show that he had double Belcher and double Druid of the Claw, so he might not be running uh, the tech cards like Harrison Jones, which we commonly find in Druid. Stuff like Lotheb, he may have taken all those out, and I expect that Scenarius is definitely not in existence in that deck. Yeah, I don't think you can actually fit in Scenarius with all that stuff. I mean, we've seen a very standard deck as far as the, the cards that came out, um, but then when you look at Ancient of War, you expect a full-on Ramp Druid, but then you don't see the... Uh, you don't expect the double combo, or a single combo is very frequent, but mm -hmm. two of them... Very hard to fit. So that's the first game for Trump. There's going to be another one after this. Trump has another uh, another deck left. He's got his Paladin, if I'm not mistaken, up against the two decks from Hawkeye, Druid again, and a Hunter. So Hawkeye's going to have to reverse sweep Trump uh, two to and one. And I, I find that's actually going to be quite difficult for Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. Paladin does seem to have a 
generally good advantage over Druid as a whole. Um, especially when you're running the Taunt version, again, at Equality and Owl, any of those little things can just take out the Druid's tempo. Uh, the Paladin plays in a very aggro style that once you lose the board control, then it's hard to catch back up. It's so kind of interesting going... what Shielded Minibot did to the Paladin, really. If you think about it, yeah, right? oh, absolutely. It, it changed the game. Shielded Minibot, I have to say, is one of the best cards in the game. It brought a class that was non existent back into the meta. Uh oh, Hawkeye with the wild growth and the skiller vate. And this is the kind of start you need as a druid to stay in this game. Um, without an early answer to that Ancient of War that's actually going to come out quite early, Hawkeye, or I'm sorry, Trump is going to run into a bit of trouble. Oh man. Does he innervate coin out of the shade? Or is that not worth it? No. I think with such a high end ramp deck, you might want to hold on to the innervate, especially with the Ancient Allure. I would not be surprised to actually see the innervate, ancient, innervate coin Ancient Allure next turn. But it really depends on whether or not Trump uh, decides Ooh, would to you take do, the would risk. Would you the really do battle. lore? Sorry, would you really do lore knowing the Truce of a Champion is coming up? Ooh, that's a good point. The question is what follow-up he has. He does actually have the Druid of the Claw, which the True Silver would be able to knock off. So maybe the Ancient of War is the play that pays off. It forces Trump to either have the Equality or the Owl. Hmm. I guess coining out Druid of the Claw might also just be, you know, be just fine, really. Mm -hmm. If he picks up a swipe, though, like, depending on whether or not Trump decides to play Muster now or wait for Quartermaster, all right, he seems to be willing to wait. It's not going to go face uh, face on into a swipe. Doesn't want to risk it. But as a result, his board is a bit weaker against the inevitable Ancient of Ward that I think we'll be seeing right now. Absolutely. And he yeah. actually decides to go with your original play with the Druid of the Claw. So this is going to be double Innervate plays, basically, because you're getting a turn 5 on turn 3 since you've got Wild Growth and a turn 7 on turn 5. So and again. I have to say that I do like this because that uh, because Trump didn't use Muster for battle. Hawkeye knows that True Silver would not be enough to take out this True of the Claw without also sacrificing the Night Juggler. Juggler. Right. So that was a very heads up play, understanding like uh, Trump's next potential plays. It puts him in an awkward situation that he's not going to be able to kill this True of the Claw without losing his Juggler at the same time. Now, in Trump's position, we have a few options. Obviously, the Muster for Battle, the one he goes with is one. He could have used his Pilot Shredder. He could have mini of Hero Power. Which do you personally think? Whoa! He wow! Trump with the juggles! Wow. You know what? He's a bit nailing those recently. And now Hawkeye must be scared to death of a Quartermaster. And never mind. Blanche, I don't think he is. I mean, if he swiped this fast, he must have been worried at the very least. But that oh, changed... Yeah. Very fast. Well, Hawkeye thinking he dodged a bullet momentarily, but there was no quartermaster in Trump's hand. Trump quickly just playing the Harrison Jones to stay on curve. Um, I would have to say that the Shredder may have been a little bit more worthwhile in that okay, position. Okay, wait. Just look at this. Double Ancient of War, double combo druid. What has he, uh, Hawkeye cut in order to make this thing? Obviously, he's not running cards like Zombie Chow. Maybe, I think One Wrath might be out. It's very I've possible. Seen a, I've seen a lot of people cut One Wrath in certain metagames. But is this a metagame where you cut One Wrath? I guess if you're playing up against Trump, you don't really mind about the Wrath uh, being gone. Since you very often expect him to play longer control decks. <laughs> And by showing that he has no answer to this Ancient of War, Hawkeye knows he's in a good spot. I would not be... Or here's a good question. Would you attack into the Ancient of War and heal it up, or would you try to draw with Lore? I would probably attack and trade, but I guess you're always weak to equality. But yeah, I, I really like the idea of attacking and uh, healing it up. Because Paladin obviously had no answer to the Ancient of War as it was. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to expect this Dr. Boom to come down, uh, run into the 5... Five five with your shredder and face. This is dangerous. Taking that much face damage and Lore Walker Cho. Lore coming Walker out. Cho this is, is actually. A, I have to say that's a very good card for. Who? Who's does it help more? I think it help, might help Hawkeye. I guess it depends on how you look at it, but. Oh, 
big game mm-hmm. hunter top deck. That is huge. Hey, admirable, calm down. Oh, I apologize. That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that that is big, huge. Do 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 golf announcers. That is a big draw by Hawkeye. He's probably going to play that big game hunter out. And this kill bot hitting for four. Of oh, course. four damage. All right, and now Trump is gonna want to play consecration. Add the, I think so. I mean, this is such a beautiful concept. Oh, this is. Yeah, this is I like... think you give. Can you afford not to? Like, think about it, right? Can you afford not to consecrate this? It. It's unfortunate to give your opponent a consecrate as you as a paladin who that's you get it back, right? If he plays button. it. It's true. <laughs> you know what? I think there should be a boot camp where all the pros are sent and they have to play with Laura Walker Cho on the board every single turn to try to maximize or win rate based on that. Actually, this is this might be even better, just trading the shield of mini bot away and then killing the Ancient of Lore with the uh, boom bot. There's a chance the shade just dies right away. Mm-hmm. And oh, oh. it just got. Lay on hands on Trump, forcing... A lay on hands in Hawkeye's hand, and you know what? Hawkeye must be ecstatic about this. My favorite part about that, you can literally see him squirm in his chair as he made that move. But he yeah. realizes it's necessary. Well, that Ancient of War, I think, looks pretty attractive. See, again, I'm not sure now that your opponent's drawn this many cards. It would make him give you an equality, though. If he I would get equality, and whatever it is you're playing, he's gonna give you cards if he's using any spells to remove this guy. Now what do you think about Hawkeye actually just going face with this uh, shade right now? Okay. I, like I mean, it. I, I think he's uh, he's expecting Trump to wipe the board no matter what, so the bit of extra damage might help when it comes to popping out the combo play. And once again, Trump is going to squirm as he has to use his equality to wipe the board. Well, if he's but again, he will only give his opponent quality, which isn't that bad. He doesn't have to use a consecrate because he has a weapon to actually oh wipe off the shade along with the mini bot. Uh, you haven't heard about the equality swipe, have you? <laughs> I'm excited for that. <laughs> Hawkeye is definitely going to nail it at least once in this match. I can't wait for the day that Lorewalker Cho comes back in the meta. It's one of those cards that, again, I was mentioning before, it's hard to tell how good it is because you never know how it changes your opponent's plays. So I think that's what has to be one of the main reasons people don't play it. So as soon as a deck that uses very few spells comes about, Lorewalker Cho will be one of the best cards in the game. Well, it was zoo for a while, I remember, um, back when people were experimenting with new deck lists after Raynad made it popular, Zoo became the testing ground of Lord Walker Cho. He was in multiple lists by a lot of people, and people said he very often wins me games against Druid because Druids can't swipe. Uh, they don't want to give me the damage or the extra, you know, versatility for for trades. So I mean, it has seen play, but let's just say it's not the most consistent value giver, even in those decks. <laughs> Belcher Shredder here sounds pretty sweet, but. I don't I want to play spells is all. I would be tempted to play with Sylvanas at this point. You need to find a way to get the board control back. So I think Sylvanas and Shredder wouldn't be bad. The only issue with this is your Sylvanas might steal that Lorewalker Cho, which... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm... That's why I figured Belcher was uh, maybe the play, but... But you also have to realize that Belcher or the uh, Lorewalker Cho is better on the Druid side because of the combo. So Let, let's make it a second show. Let's make it a second show. Come on, show number two. Oh, oh, disappointed. I'm optimist. disappointed. Yeah, get out of there. Get out of there, mate. So let's see. What are Trump's options? He may kill the Sylvanas with the true silver and take the 50-50 of giving him the card. But then if he loses the Belcher, he's going to run into a bit of trouble. The thing is, it's almost better for Hawkeye to have Cho, because all he needs is extra bodies for Savage Roar, right? He doesn't really care exactly. about the effect at this point. He's been playing it very slowly, and it's been pretty obvious. He's thinking, and he's kind of squirming. This is a difficult choice. That See, I love cards like Laura Walker Cho that completely change how you play the game, and really how you think about it. And he steals the... Cho! He gets it! <laughs> well, 
Hawkeye, deal with it. Actually, he could just keep her in if he feels like that. True, but... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Wait, wait, this isn't lethal, is it? No. No, 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 it's never lethal. Lever lethal. Um, you could keep her Wrath for draw, but then you're giving that to your opponent. I'm not sure you really want to. I wouldn't mind Wrathing to start off with, just to cycle that, but then again, it gives your opponent a Wrath. Yeah, that's the issue, really. I think that's the biggest issue. You could play level hands and fetch for, uh... Like, <laughs> you... <laughs> this Lord Walker's is basically winning the game for whoever we don't... Is. Exactly. We, we don't know... How does Lore Walker Joe is really affecting this game because it's changed your each opponent each player's moves on such an extreme level since it came out. Yeah. Like Trump has been just looking at that show every single time he has to make a play. And you can see that he's super uncomfortable about it. And the Hawkeye going to protect the show. He says, you know what? You wanna go through this? You gotta go through my belcher first. Gotta give him a consecrate if he really wants it. Oh, oh man. he's gonna give him a wrath. Yeah, because he's going to get it back anyway. <laughs> you don't care, right? You're just getting it back. Doesn't matter. And Trump's thinking to himself, what is this madness? What is this esports? This this is the definition of esports right now, because it's actually, like, actually though. You can't practice for this. It's it's come to a point that it's no longer really that much luck when the Cho's down. It's not like a card that Doomsayer popped out. It's just affecting how both players play. They have to think through moves that they probably never had to decide in the past. So this game is really going to end up showing kind of the skill of each player, of how to go about each turn, which cards are worth in giving, giving to the other one. Uh, Trump finds something to keep his uh, zombie chow alive through the attacking of the Belcher. He actually cycled the Wrath, which I thought was really nice, because you're going to get it back, so it's basically not costing you anything. There's a chance you get it back, that is. So I do like that line of play from Trump. But that might just be... Is this, is this lethal? So we've got 14 plus right, 2, close. 16 plus 3, 19. 19. Yeah. Not just yet, 4 off. Quite close. Oh, wow. Oh. Nope, still yeah. not lethal. It's close. It's getting there. So Keeper of the Grove, and then... Now, here's my question. Would you lay on hands yourself... To give your opponent 30? Get, I'm not sure. But try to get yourself into double combo and then play Emperor. But that's still 22, and Paladin will have 30 and possibly a Tyrion. That's true. Uh, although you do have Equality Swipe. You do have Equality Swipe. With <laughs> that is the Grove. also... I, I forgot about that, but you do have that. What is going on with this game? The most hilarious yeah. moment is when uh, somebody gets equality from Cho, and then the equality, and then they silence off the minion they equality to remove the effect on it. That is always an yeah. hilarious moment. And it's a great play that a lot of people overlook. I have to say, this may be one of the most difficult games I've casted because I don't know what to do. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody knows what to do. Isn't that the point of Lord Walker Cho? That's true. I don't, I don't well, think Trump, Trump can, can get really rid of it. Idea. Trump can just get rid of Cho if he doesn't want him anymore. But now the question is, is it valuable to him? Right. Like, does he really want to let his opponent play lay on hands without giving it back? Mm -hmm. Is that really an option for Trump? I think the answer is no most Amazing. of the time. But he also, four out of the six cards in his hand are spells, which he probably doesn't want to give Hawkeye. And if he's been keeping track, he knows that at least two of the spells or cards in Hawkeye's hand are equality and lay on hands. Right. So if he expects him to have combo also, he may want to keep this Cho alive. Once again, we start the cycle. So Trump goes for value, and Hawkeye goes for yeah. removal. Howl. But so again, here's a problem. Okay, so I, th I think Trump's being very smart about this, using the Reinforce before playing the Knife Juggler in order to make sure that this Lore Walker Cho stays alive. So I, I really like his line of play here. This is actually hilarious to think about. Uh-oh! Oh, that's big. That is a that's big draw. Keep for the Grove huge. on the follow-up, too. And I like using Wrath here to cycle. If he does do that, so that way Emperor gets I, I one more confidence effect on. I agree, and if he picks up another Savage War, this is going to be game-winning. Oh, he doesn't cycle it. Yeah. Just goes for the trade, and he's going to be up to 19 health after this. 
which is going to put him in a very comfortable spot. And Trump now having to deal with a 5-5 cannot use his spells until he decides that he wants to kill the Lord Walker Cho. Which means he's giving time. Hawkeye a ticket to lay on hands. Exactly, but he does have the Innervate in hand. And with the Force of Nature being 5 and the Savage Roar being on 2, a second Savage Roar will still be able to be played without that Innervate. So that is a 22 damage burst for those of you who actually have never seen it themselves. It's the three two mana charges or three two two charge minions from Force of Nature, and each Savage Roar gives each of those minions plus your own character, the Druid, an extra two damage. So all added up, it's a 22 damage burst from hand. Reporting for duty. Well, 22 is not enough to kill the opponent, but with show on the board, I think it would be just enough. Sylvanas, so no, are we going to do that trade again? Is that going to happen again? Okay, so I think he wants to calculate its odds with Wrath. If it gets his other Savage Roar, this will be game over. Question is whether he not whether or not he finds those odds worthwhile. What again, do you think? swipe equality could be good enough, and if Cho's out, then you can always... That's true, he could also get... Has, he's used one swipe already, so he still has another one. So really, exactly, he has two yeah. cards that are very good right now. And it looks like he may be doing the safer option at this point. He's going to give his opponent show again, and Trump's going to be stuck with that panda once more. The only issue with this, if he does happen to get the... Combo is that he's going to be a, sh a little combo, bit short. He's going to be one mana he short. Can, well, he can he innervate out here with power, right? Oh, he oh and he would have had game. No, Hawkeye would have been able to end the game if he had decided to Wrath first there. And not equality, yeah. Well, he still has 22 next turn, and how does Trump stop it? He either needs a Taunt... I mean, he's so, gonna have to cycle his Wrath here. He has to Wrath his own minion. The question is whether or not he knows that. The game has gone on for a while. Did he ever see the second combo in Hawkeye's deck? I don't believe I he don't has, because Hawkeye he never played the second so, uh, Savage War, right? I don't think I've ever seen a Lore Walker Cho stay alive this long. So, this game comes down to whether or not Trump realizes mm. he has to wrath one of his own minions. And if he fails to do so, or fails to get anything that'll save him, such as a Tyrion, it is game over, and Hawkeye will be taking this game. Hey, he might pick up a Tyrion, you never know that. You know, you've gotta, you gotta stay hopeful. He's wrathing, no, he's wrathing the Cho. Wrathing Cho, yeah, he has to wrath Cho. What, what else are you gonna do? You need to find that taunt. Oh, he picks up the Tyrion! He gets the Tyrion. Oh, crap, no, he can't. He's not gonna be able to play it. Uh oh. Rest in peace, Trump. Rest in pepperonis, mate. Oh, you are out of this game. Hawkeye is going to take that win with the double combo. Oh, man. What a game. I've never seen anything like <laughs> this. Uh, so Hawkeye is going to be able to equalize the series here. One to one. Druid over Paladin taking the win. You know, when we were talking about how the matchup would develop, we never really considered what could happen. Um, but yeah, can't, I mean, things happen, can't right? consider that? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like that doomsday, that elusive doomsayer out of the shredder in that most tense, you know, board control moment. And then you're like, well, never mind. All the commentary's out of the window suddenly. Uh, that kind of happened with Show, but it was interesting to look the back and forth between spells and how both players tried to use it. I mean, it's obviously not a. Um, and like, it's funny to me that this card has been experimented so little with that people have no idea what to do with it. Exactly. I feel like we were just kind of sitting back and just spectating ourselves and just watching the game. It, it's so hard to determine what's going through the players' <laughs> minds when we ourselves, as relatively pro players, really had no idea. We didn't know what to do. Like, So I can't imagine that Trump or Hawkeye really had any idea in that position. That show was going back and forth between players. Sorry, I can't handle the. I can't handle this. Like this was this was the most unexpected outcome of the day for me. But yeah, I mean that's a, that's good. Um, so moving on to the last game is gonna have to be Hawkeye's Hunter versus Trump's Paladin again. If the uh, Hawkeye picks up a really strong start with his Hunter, then the Paladin will have a tough time catching up. But you know, Shielded Mini Bots in his GVG has changed the meta game so much so for Pally that they are able to sometimes even be on the aggressive with them. 
and this is actually not a good start from Hawkeye. He's in a little bit of trouble. Even though Trump himself doesn't have the greatest start himself, the Iron Bee Owl will help. But again, Hawkeye really has to consider whether or not he wants to coin out this knife juggler, whether it be a little bit patient and use coin for the animal companion. He's kind of in a weird spot. What do you think? I think that like his curve is a bit off though. Like you really want to get that fast start. Then again, if he's playing a mid-range deck, he could always find the bow to kind of slow things down earlier in the game. Like he wouldn't have too much of an issue just controlling the board. Oh, freezing trap here on the juggler. Trump has got to know this is probably it. I mean, either way, whether it's explosive or not, you're still attacking into this. If it's explosive, you're attacking to get it out of the way before you play more minions. If it's freezing, you attack to get it out of the way before a bull comes out. So, I'm guessing he... What do you think about him using hero power? We're just throwing down the 3-3 Aldor. For tempo? I mean, I like the Aldor tempo play. Very few people... Too few people do... Ah, another Huffer. What about that? Wow. Never expected it. Now, do take the knife... Well, we can't actually knife juggle 50-50 here. His only option will be to use the True Silver to wipe off this Huffer. Which really isn't that bad. I think Hawkeye might have to opt for the Juggler Animal Companion play with the coin. Because Lothab alone dies to what's on the board, and it doesn't really do much. Exactly, oh, and I think it's actually going... Bad. Oh, I actually do life like the... Uh... This is actually a difficult decision. Would you prefer to use the Mad Scientist here, or more likely go for the Animal Companion? If I had high main, I might consider it. I would keep my coin, but I don't have high main, so I'm probably throwing the Animal Companion on the off chance that I find. Um, now, it's going to be huge whether with. or not it hits the 1-1, one -one, and it misses. That is very unfortunate for Hawkeye here. Down goes Leok. Sludge Belcher, I can see coming down. His other option was to actually use Alder Peace Keeper and Mini Bot, which wouldn't have been bad either. But it's here we just have playing a into Unleash the Hounds very, very hard with the juggler already established. Exactly. I would not mind seeing an owl on this Belcher. It's not as though he has much of a choice, honestly. I mean, when the Paladin is not feeling under pressure by turn 5 as a Hunter, and you have no high main on the back end, you have to expect to be pushed out of the aggression. Like, okay. it's gonna be here's, very difficult. Here's a scary question. Do you Hunter's Mark this Belcher and throw down Scientist for 50-50? That might be the winning play. And by that I mean the only play that wins this game for a Hunter mm -hmm. player. I mean, you're afraid of Consecration, right? All the time. I guess the safer play is to play the bow and kill it manually, so that then you can play Scientist later and not risk your entire game on a 50. Again, this is the more conservative play, but I really do have to agree with you that the winning play might have been pinging it off with the Mad Scientist there. Oh, Trump but picks up as the we see the Consecrate come down, he ended up making the right play and holding on to the Scientist. That turned out to be an advantageous for him for playing conservatively. No, I think Hawkeye's play was definitely the uh, the more stable one, right? By virtue of not having to extend, like, put his entire tournament life, because, well, not tournament life at this point, but the match life, in the hands of a 50-50, when you could just develop a bow and kill the minion yourself, I think is, it would have not been worth it, not by a long shot. Oh, wow. And Trump picking up muster for battle with the knife juggler can pop the spider. Do you just play Dr. Boom, or do you try it for that smaller play? I think you have Boom. You're at 18 health. You want to actually become the aggressor here. What will Hunter do when you have Dr. Boom? The only thing you can really be scared of is some kind of Unleash the Hounds play. But even in that case, you do have Lay on Hands to actually heal you back up to full. I think at the... Oh! That's... Yeah, I like that a lot. You think trading into the Scientist there or would start and go face here is better? I mean, if you're, it's kind of the, the the middle ground between being afraid of Unleash and not being. Because if he does have the board wipe, then keeping the shielded mini bot doesn't really save you at all. All right, so Lothab. I mean, that I is such a painful play for the hunter. This is base. This basically has to be freezing trap for him, right? Or I is think he not so playing? With how he ended up playing about that. But my question is, why would he use the bow charge? 
on the 2-2 there when this trap is about to get activated. And the heal bot, I think that Trump is about to be pulling away with this match, getting all the healing in his deck between the heal bot and the lay on hands. To it's a point all about that the show. He needs a lore walker show to come out of this. Doesn't he? Well, that, even, that, that wouldn't change anything, but it would be pretty awesome to witness again. But yeah, I mean, Hawkeye's early start was uh, really too bad. Like, it started picking up on turn three, so that kind of... Uh, the transition to the mid game was okay, but the early game was just not there. And against the Paladin, now that they've got what they have as tools, you really can't afford missing that. Absolutely. It's yeah. way too punishing. Wow. That is not what he wanted to see there. Um, this high main... Unfortunately, will not do enough here. It actually I won't imagine, do anything. Exactly. I, I can imagine that Trump is just going to start attacking face and maybe even lay on hands himself just in case. He could always pick up a Joseph Champion to go for a near guaranteed lethal afterwards. Oh. Well, what about double juggler muster? Could you get four damage like this to the face That'll and then proceed to win? Eggs. Well, you could. It's not very likely, mm -hmm. but you could. That's actually not a bad play, because it does have six pings plus the one damage. So if three the of the weapon. six hit face, each one has 33% chance. I personally the think I'll go with that, because what two cards could Hawkeye have to kill him? Unleash for seven plus kill command to face. Hmm. But Unleash wouldn't actually do seven, because he already has two minions on board. Yeah, so he's, he would five. do five, yeah. You wouldn't die, I don't think. But I mean, Sorry. Trump is a very conservative player. I wouldn't be surprised if he just silenced off the high main, killed it off, and kept moving on with his life. And played it very, very safely. I think he's gonna go for the muster. Alright, he's doing it. No, oh, he's not. no, he's gonna howl it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I think he's still very. Like, Trump takes the winning play either way. I think there's like 17 ways to play this. Oh man, the high main's coming in back to back, but way too late for Hawkeye. Exactly. Tr Trump just held down this board. Hawkeye did not have the beginning he really needed to challenge the Paladin, to force him to uh, kind of go on the defensive, and therefore Trump was able to take an easy game there. He drew all the heals he needed so he could stop the endgame burst that could have given him a last chance opportunity, but Trump ended up taking that whole series. Yep, Trump going 2-1 over Hawkeye, which has been doing very well recently. So Trump, uh, actually, I guess... Uh redeemed from yesterday's loss against Harudra. Uh, he actually beat a druid today, so that must have felt pretty sweet. Now, what I'm really... Uh, what I'm curious about is what Trump's lineup is going to be next time, because he seems to be always bringing the same three decks, right? Which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. He's very predictable. He has a very specific play style, but it's all pretty much the same. Uh, so I wonder if he'll shake it up in, in, a little bit next time. Uh, again, I wouldn't be surprised if he keeps the same set. He's having been having success with it. They're decks he's comfortable with. They're decks he knows how to play all the different matchups. And they're ones that even if you kind of try to bring counters for, really don't have that many counters themselves. Yeah. He brings solid decks all around. Well, Trump has won the game today. Now, we're going to be back on Friday. Today is, uh, that was the last match of the day. We have played four. Unfortunately, we couldn't play Show versus Tides of Time for... Uh, um, unknown reasons at this point. Times was basically missing in action. We might see him on Friday. He's got a game plan against Ivan. We'll have to keep you updated on that. Um, in the meantime, we'll be taking a two days break. We'll be back on Friday. And before we go, last shout out to Vulcan and Squarespace for sponsoring the tournament. Squarespace, a website creating website as weird as that might sound to you you need templates you need art you need anything you don't know anything about coding for your website go there get yourself a really really easy to set up website and it's going to cost yep. you pretty much nothing and absolutely and quick shout out to the production crew for uh well played and Vulcan Deck Masters, it's been great doing this. Shout out to Noxious for being an awesome co-caster. Shout out to my uh, new team, Team Illuminati. And let's see if I can point this out. Everyone follow Twitter right there. Yeah, do that same same for him. Oh wait, there's there's a, I have my there Twitter. There's my Twitter yeah. there. Okay. Well, everyone then. follow Noxious. He and he also makes some cool YouTube videos if you guys want to look at those. Yeah. But it's been great. Thanks all for watching and uh, tune in Until Friday later this week. Have a nice one.